Leroy's Pokemon Sapphire Walkthrough, Part 63. Alright, so we finally have all eight gym badges, and we're ready to head to the Pokemon League, but of course we're gonna stall out and wait as long as we possibly can, and go do some other stuff, so... I got Sfeel out of the PC, and I taught it Waterfall, which we're gonna need, and, um, yeah, he's a great HM slave, knows a four HMs. So yeah, I'm actually gonna fly over to Duford, and I'm gonna check out the abandoned ship, because now that we can use Dive, there's actually some more areas over there we can explore, so... Yeah, I'm gonna fly over to Duford, and I will just cut away to the abandoned ship. Alright, here we are again, um... We were here earlier once we could finally use Surf, and we pretty much beat all the trainers and did all the, you know, stuff that there is to do. Um, except for the one thing, of course, which is, um, dive down and get the scanner. And I'll just show you really quick, there's the guy up here, um, who's looking for the scanner. This guy up here, he's like... I mean, he's he says he's investigating the ship, looking for the scanner. I mean, seriously, he's it's obviously not in that room. He's been sitting in that room the entire time. Like, dude, if you want that scanner, go out and look for it. But anyways, yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do, obviously. So, go in this room right over here by the dude with the blue hat and um, dive down in here. Yeah, and obviously you'll want a Pokemon with dive, and you should have a Surf because um, if you got here without Surf, well, you must be hacking because that's impossible. Anyways, uh, yeah, dive down and go over here and go through this thing. And when you see the light, you can press B and go back up. So yeah. And this place over here is actually kind of confusing. If you don't know really what's going on, you're just going to be really confused and you'll probably just be frustrated and leave. Um, basically, like, all these doors are locked. Um, and they have, like, room 1, room 2, and room 3. Basically, you want to start off in this room, and I don't know if you guys noticed that. Right when you walk into the room, there's, like, a glitter. There's, like, a blinking light, and that's gonna represent a hidden item. And in this case, it's the room 1 key. And then, obviously, there's this stuff over here, like the water stone. Um, yeah, a couple nice things like that you can pick up. But anyways, yeah, right when you go into these rooms, you're gonna see... You're gonna want to look for that, um, that flickering light. That little flashing thing. And I think all these doors up here... Oh, this one's open. Oh, but you can't go anywhere, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we have the room one key, so we're just gonna head over there. This one's locked, too, I think, so, yeah. Um, head back into room one. So, basically, the way it works, you just need to go from room to room, finding the hidden key. And if you saw, there's actually two that time. One of them was over here. And sometimes it's just gonna say there's just trash, which means there's nothing there. The other one was around here somewhere. Um, you can just leave and come back in and then just look for that little flashing thing. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just rewind the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyways, this right here is TM18, which is Rain Dance. Um, I'm not going to be using it, but it can be pretty useful depending on the Pokemon you use. So anyways, yeah, we have another key, and basically the way it works, once you get to the end of this whole puzzle pattern, whatever you want to call it, you will get the scanner, so. Um, yeah, there were three of them, though. One was over here. That one's just trash. One of them was around here somewhere. Yeah, There's one over here, but I don't really remember exactly where it was, so... Um, I'm just gonna come back into the room. And... Oh! There it is! Yeah, it's right on the trash can, so... The room 6 key, so now we can head over there. But yeah, this is really complicated, like... Um, odds are, the first time you play through it, you're not gonna be looking for little, like, flickering lights, so you might just be completely confused. And this one, there's actually not any hidden items, um... But, the thing is, you need to go through this room to get into this room, but unfortunately, you can only see the little flickering lights if you go through that way and get trapped by the trash cans, so... We'll have to go through that door, try to remember where all of them were, then come back around that way. So yeah, this it's pretty confusing. And there were four of them, and I think I got them, so... Yeah, I don't know why your player can't just walk over those trash cans, like, seriously. Anyways, um, there was one right around here. Where, yeah, if you need to, you can just go around and press A everywhere, pretty much, until you find it. Um, where is it? Where is it? Okay, there it is, the room 2 key. And I'm pretty sure the rest of it's just trash, so... I mean, yeah, just trash. I'm not even gonna worry about that other stuff. But yeah, basically, now we got the room 2 key. And once you do that, you can head back out, over to here. And that's where you'll find the scanner. So... There we go. Yeah, and there's no flickering lights or anything. And there's the scanner, so, yeah. And I mean, you'd think if Captain Stern's assistant guy, like, s devoted his whole life to, like, exploring this ship and looking for the scanner, you would think eventually, you know, he would discover this area over here, but 
you know, apparently he just wants to stay in that one room all day, staring at that table, so... Yeah, we're gonna go back to him and talk to him now. Alright, and diving once again. I, I mean, I talked about this in an earlier video, I just think it's so hilarious that it's like, you can dive underwater and your player can just all of a sudden breathe underwater just because your Pokémon jumps under. Like, I'm pretty sure in real life you would just drown and die, but... Anyways, I'm gonna grab this escape rope really quick just because I forgot it last time, then just it was annoying me, so yeah, there we go. And speaking of, uh, well, I guess, <laughs> speaking of drowning in water, which is kind of bad, but, um, doesn't really have anything to do with that, but my whole town just got flooded today really badly, but no one drowned, but that just reminded me of it. Anyways, yeah, right here he's like, oh, that's the scanner, and, um, oh, yeah, that's right, you don't give it to this guy, he wants you to deliver it to Captain Stern, I forgot about that, so. Um, let's fly out of this place. Aviator, fly! Oh yeah, that's right, you can't use it. Yeah, you're like, on the ship, it's like, oh, you can't fly. Uh, you have to be outside the ship to use fly, so let's use the escape rope. The one that we just found. And yeah, that's all we have to do in the abandoned ship. Um, if you're wondering how I got there, you pretty much just surf, uh, east from Duford, and eventually you get there. Anyways, yeah, let's go back to Slateport and deliver this thing to Captain Stern. And this is where, um... Well, actually, by the way, I should mention, this whole mission over here, side quest, I guess if you want to call it, it's all optional. Um, in fact, you probably don't want to do this at all unless you plan on getting one of these. It's the Deep, te uh, the deep Sea Tooth or the Deep Sea Scale. The Deep Sea Tooth and the Deep Sea Scale um, can be attached to Clam Pearl, and if you trade it, they will evolve. Deep Sea Tooth gets you a Huntail, and Deep Tooth Scale gets you a Gorbis, or whatever, I can't pronounce it. Um, but yeah, basically that's what it is. I'll put up the pictures just so you guys know. And, um, I guess now that we have that taken care of, we can head on to the next location. So, I'll see you all in a minute. Alright, back to old, good old Fall Arbor Town. Fall Arbor Town. The one I can't pronounce. Fall Arbor, that's it. For, I used to always call it, like, Fall Arbor Town. I think I talked about that in an earlier video. But, anyways, if you go just west, you will see this waterfall over here. So, you can climb up it, because, you know, little tiny spheels can apparently carry, you know, your player all the way up a waterfall somehow. And there's a nice little rare candy, and I know all you rare candy lovers out there, there's so many of you, there's another one of those rare candies. Um, so yeah, let's head back out. Ah, oh, wild battle. Alright, so, um, yeah, next you want to go down this bridge, and there's this big mountain we have to climb, and I'm going to do the smart thing and cut to the top. So I'll see you all in a minute. And here we are, and we're back in Meteor Falls. If you guys remember, we are over here... Um, you know, we did stuff with Team Aqua and Team Magma a long time ago, but what we couldn't do is go up this waterfall, and now we can, because we have waterfall. Um, so yeah. Basically, in this video, if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm just going around, um, doing waterfall and dive stuff I couldn't do earlier on, but... Yeah, whole new area up here in Meteor Falls, so let's check it out. And we'll start off by going down this ladder. Yeah, stupid wild Golbats, I get sick of them. <laughs> I'm sure you all do. Anyways, another ladder over here. Arrgh. Don't you just hate when your repels just completely fail? Anyways, right here is TM23, which is Iron Tail. Iron Tail is a steel type move, very powerful, but also very inaccurate. Um, I actually, normally I don't like inaccurate moves, but there's not that many steel type moves in this game, and I usually use it if I have like an aggro on my team, but yeah, it's one of the few inaccurate moves I actually kind of recommend. But anyways, we got a double battle up here. We're going to put up Aviator and Goron, and see what they can do against these old people over here. We've been married for 50 years. The bond we share as a couple could never be broken. I wonder if they spent, like, their entire 50 years of marriage up in this cave. They're just cavemen living in here. Now, uh, they got a Metacham and a Hariyama. A Hairy Mama, as some like to call it. And we also have our Hairy Mama and our Aviator, so... Let's go ahead and use Earthquake. That'll attack both of them, and not Aviator since it's flying, and... Um, yeah, let's go with an Earthquake. I was like, do I want Brick Break? And I'm like, no, Brick Break's not very effective against Metacham. Anyways, let's use Fly on that Goron, too. And as Protect! Well, good thing we didn't attack it. Well, I guess we did attack it with the Earthquake, but whatever. We're mainly going after Hariyama, and actually, in this battle, I would highly recommend going after Hariyama first. Because if you, um, try to attack Metacham first, for one, it can just use Protect and just block all your hits. But also, Hariyama knows the move Focus Punch, and... Um, that move basically, it only works if the Pokemon doesn't take any damage. So if it gets that Focus Punch off, it's going to do a ton of damage, and it's using it right now. Um, so that's why you want to definitely hit that thing every turn while it's alive. And of course, Psychic's going to do a lot of damage, whatever. 
I was hoping he'd be stupid and try to use it on Aviator while it was up in the sky. And... yep, it's gonna die. And a critical hit. Not really sure if we needed it, but I don't care. It's dead. So, all we got left is Metacham. And Jelly Belly's up to level 35. Yeah, we got the experience share on it. And well, I guess I used Brick Break on Hariyama, but since it's dead, it's just going to be not very effective on Metacham. Anyways, let's go with Earthquake and Fly on you, and those together should knock it out. Ah, oh, dang it! I was hoping you were going to use it on uh, Aviator, but whatever. I guess Goron's going to die. Can't expect him to take two Psychics, so let's go to Tambora, how about? And we can use Overheat on this thing. So, flying out, the fly is probably going to kill it anyways, but... Overheat just for overkill. Oh, and of course you have Protect! Wow. The annoying thing about Protect in Double Battles is that it protects both the hits. It's like it's bad enough that you're using Protect, but then it protects both the hits. Anyways, let's just do the same thing, I guess. Actually, um, I don't want to waste my time flying, so let's just use Dragon Ball. Oh, come on! Seriously! Protect- Why? Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to waste my time? You just have to protect yourself from both the hits. Like, seriously, is that necessary? Alright, let's... Oh, Psychic! Yay, you're not gonna use Protect for a third time, because it's not gonna work. Anyways, Dragon Breath won't do a whole lot. Oh, but you're paralyzed! Good! I'm glad you're paralyzed, even though Overheat's definitely gonna kill you. I'd rather have you dead paralyzed than dead not paralyzed. Yeah, where's your stupid Protect now, Metacham? Can't protect yourself from that Overheat, can you? I love talking smack to a fake Pokemon at a screen. I probably look so stupid, like, why is that kid yelling at his Game Boy? <laughs> oh, whatever. Anyways, let's climb up these stairs and take on this trainer over here. And first I'm actually going to move uh, Jelly Belly up. And you'll see why in a minute. Ah, seriously? Okay, let's talk to him. This is where Dragon Trainers do our training. The champion even visits. Now do you see how special it is here? Well, yeah, this is the Dragon Tamer. I think this is the first Dragon Tamer we've seen in the game. Pretty sure there might be some in the, uh, or in Victory Road, but... Yeah, he's got dragons, and that's why we're using Jelly Belly, because it does Ice Beam, and, um, Ice is, like, the ultimate move against dragon types, especially since most of them are dragon and flying, or maybe even dragon and ground if you're playing Diamond and Pearl. Um, and not, not quite a one-hit kill, but then again, Altaria has very high special defense. So, I'll just use another Ice Beam. He might have full restores or something. Eh, I guess not, but... Yeah, if you don't have Ice-type moves, these things are actually pretty hard to take out, but you took care of Altaria's back in the gym with Winona and Fortree City, so you should have a pretty good idea of how to kill them. And he has a second one, so, yeah. Just make sure you don't come into this fight kind of beaten up, like, then there's actually a chance you could kill your team, but, you know, you should be fine. I mean, dragon battles are usually the toughest, um, from all the regular trainers, but this one's not too bad, because... I mean, it could be worse. It could be, like, Salamence or something, so, yeah. And there we go. Didn't expect me to be so strong. Dude, don't you know I have all eight gym badges? I mean, shouldn't I be, like, in the newspaper and on TV and stuff? Anyways, let's climb down here. Well, I guess jump down there. And I'm gonna spray some repels. Alright, and let's go down this ladder. And this is gonna bring us to the little secret area in the back. I guess it's not really a secret. It's not like no one knows about it, but I don't know. I just like to think that it's a secret and I'm so smart for finding this place. Anyways, if you surf back here, you will get a very, very useful item that, um, it's a TM. It's TM02, which is Dragon Claw. If you have a Dragon type, um, I would definitely recommend picking up this item. It's like the ultimate move for dragons in this game, basically. Um, yeah, very powerful Dragon type move, and obviously that's gonna be going on Altaria. Um, Tree Ninja can learn it too, but, you know, Aviator's getting it, because Aviator's a Dragon type, so... We're gonna get rid of Dragon Breath. And, I don't know what's with... Like, all the Dragon type moves start with Dragon, it's like, Dragon Claw, Dragon Breath, Dragon Rush, Dragon Rage, like, seriously. Um, but anyways, yeah, Dragon Claw, that's a nice boost in power, so, yeah. There we go, and the, um, secret thing about this little area here, you can catch Bagons. Now, Bagons are the Dragon-type Pokémon that will eventually evolve into Salamence, which everyone wants to catch in this game. The only problem with that, though, is you have to wait till after the 8th Gym Badge to get Bagon, and it's very, very hard to train up, um, and you have to wait all the way till level 50 to get a Salamence. So you have to be very patient if you want a Salamence in the Elite Four, but it's well worth it if you can manage to be that patient, let me tell you. Those things are very powerful. Anyways, down here, it's a PP up. Yeah, get your laughs out. PP, haha, hilarious, right? And, um, time for an abrupt ending!